Hello folks, I'm Dr. Fazl. I'm a kidney specialist as well as internal medical specialist. So I specialist both in internal medicine as well as in kidneys and related disorders. I have been practicing many, uh, I, I have been in practice for many years. Uh, today you're watching uh, March 2024 edition of Dr. Fazl TV show. The topic of discussion today is folks, um, the kidneys, uh, anatomy, uh, how the kidneys uh, function, where they are located, you know, in the body, and what they do, and how would the kidney pain would feel like? I think that's the most common uh, question I asked uh, has been asked: is that how the kidney pain feel like? If the kidney pain is the same as the, as the back pain, sometimes the kidney pain mimic the back pain. So we have to uh, sometimes know. Uh, so, so my my idea for my discussion today is to give some uh, brief introduction to the kidneys and their functionality as well as the common symptoms of kidney disease as well as uh, you know uh, the pain which can come from the kidneys uh, and uh, then we will take some questions at the end of my discussion so let, let's jump right in so folks uh, before uh, we move forward uh, let me uh, let's do one thing so we're gonna do um, a basic um, introduction to the kidneys where they are located in the body. So folks, I'm gonna bring uh, a live hologram in front of you, as you can see right here. Uh, this is uh, a human body and you can see, uh, let's uh, twist it a little bit and you can see on the back side, we have uh, two kidneys. Uh, uh, the kidneys weight around the size of your fist, remember, so size of your fist, the kidneys are as big as the size of your fist. Um, they have, they weigh around 150 grams, remember, so 150 grams each kidney. Uh, they are made up of something um, known as uh, nephrons. Nephrons is the, like the bricks of the wall. Uh, they are the building blocks of the kidneys. There are 1.5 million nephrons in each kidney, 1.5 million, right? So the kidneys do a lot of things. Um, uh, but before we do uh, discuss about that, uh, let's jump inside the kidney. So I'm gonna jump right into the kidney. So, okay, now you can see all around me, I'm in the kidney. This is the, that's the opening of the kidney here, uh, is, uh, you know, the, all the, the material which is filtered by the kidney goes into the tube known as ure the ureter. And then on the left side, you can see all those arteries, uh, the blood come from the heart, uh, that is a dirty blood which goes into those filters, or we call them glomer lie. You can see on my other side, and it gets filtered out and then get into uh, the urine, and the urine goes into this uh, tube on the right side. This is known as ureter, right? So, uh, and then the clean blood goes through the renal vein. You can see this blue blue blood flowing back to the uh, out of this uh, kidney. Uh, uh, we call it uh, renal vein. So, uh, the artery in kidney is opposite. So mostly in other part of the body, the arteries take the uh, fresh blood and the veins take the, the dirty blood, you can put it that way. But in the kidneys, the renal artery or the artery of the kidney bring in the dirty blood and then get washed up, cleaned up in the kidneys and get into the clean blood and it goes back to the body through renal vein. And the, all, the expert, uh, all the waste material uh, get uh, filtered out through the filtration process in the kidney inside the ureter and make urine. So that's the basic um, anatomy of the kidney. kidney. Let me jump right back out of the kidney, I'm back out of the kidney, back onto the stage. Now, um, let's this hologram go away. So now we're going to talk about, uh, besides those two kidneys, okay, so where they're located, as we discussed, you can see, let me, uh, let me bring another hologram right here. Uh, you can see there are two kidneys, one uh, on each side of the spine. They're right underneath the rib cage, right? So right where your last rib is and the, uh, and the spine is, the kidneys are, one kidney is on each side of, the, uh, uh, of that area. We call it renal angle, renal angle. That's the medical terminology. So if you're gonna have a pain from the kidney, uh, most likely you're gonna have the pain in that area. So what we do, we punch on the back of the patients, uh, that area, if the kidneys have infection or has a, high pressure in the kidney due to blockage. Uh, when we thump on that area, they will feel pain. 
this is known as a uh, 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 precursion, right? Precursion is uh, like a, uh, like you, you thump on something, we call it precursion, right? So that's how you find out if there's kidney pain or not. So now, uh, but if there's a stone which is coming from, and now well, let's bring uh, another hologram right here. You can see there's a stone and stone is stuck in the ureter. So if the stone is stuck in the ureter, you might have the pain down below, not, not in the same area, but you might have where the ureter is going. It could be in your mid abdomen or into the front of your pelvic area, you know, so you can have pain there as well. So the, the pain of the kidney could be in all that pathway wherever the urine go. So we can get that uh, information very easily by taking a good history from the patient, good examination. Sometimes you have to do certain diagnostic like x-ray of the abdomen um, or ultrasound of the kidney or, um, you know, a CAT scan. Sometimes we do an MRI as well, but, but I mean, between those modalities, we'll find out uh, if the kidneys are causing pain and then uh, certain blood tests will also indicate along with the urine test that if this is kidney pain or something else. So those are the basic uh, tools we have as a uh, medical professionals uh, to find out if the source of the pain or dysfunction is from the kidney or something else, right? So let's talk about a few more things. Now, we talked about what the kidneys do. Now, remember the kidneys not only do um, filtration of the uh, blood and make urine, but they also control blood pressure. So there's, uh, let's bring another hologram right here. You can see, you can see these are the renal arteries and they're going, they're taking the blood to the kidney. So, and then the blood is coming right back to the uh, renal vein. So if there's a blockage in the renal artery, and that could be due to plaque buildup or due to um, a you know, genetic reason, if there's a fibrous ring in that area, uh, that can cause impaired blood flow to the kidneys. What the kidneys do, they react, and they react by producing certain hormones on the renin. The so renin causes high blood pressure, that causes the blood vessel to constrict and the blood pressure goes up. And there's medication and for that, sometimes you have to fix the blockage by, you know, by angiogram and doing a stent placement or, or, or just using the medication, you know. So we call it secondary hypertension. So, so there are two kinds of high blood pressure, primary high blood pressure or essential hypertension or primary hypertension, where you get high blood pressure due to aging process and atherosclerosis and thickening of the blood vessels or secondary hypertension, that is due to something else, and that could be mostly due to kidneys. So basically, the point I'm trying to make it here is that uh, the hypertension is actually a primarily uh, a specialization uh, portion of the nephrologist or kidney specialist. Most people think it is the cardiologist. Uh, it could be done by anybody who knows what they're doing, but uh, primarily the kidney specialists are trained uh, heavily on management of blood pressure because kidneys control the blood pressure, not the heart, just remember that. So, and they control blood pressure by releasing certain chemicals we call hormones, uh, which can cause, um, 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 it's like a management tool of the kidneys uh, by reducing chemical, like, uh, for example, renin. Renin goes effect on the, on the blood vessels through another chemical and that cause blood vessel to become smaller or bigger and, and control the blood pressure. So that's important to know that. So kidneys also make another hormone known as erythropoietin. Erythropoietin goes onto the, or act on your bone marrow and make blood. So kidneys also make vitamin D as well, remember that. So if you have a kidney disease, you will be low on blood count, you will be low on your um, vitamin D and your blood pressure will be high. Remember, so that's why, because the kidneys take care of all that, you know. That's why when the kidneys are not working 100%, you're going to have swelling. And you can see here, here's the kidneys not working here. And you can see that uh, uh, the, blood, the fluid is being backed up and the legs are being swollen. So you can see the legs are swollen. Let's this uh, hologram go away. Now let's go back to our further discussion. So the other discussion is. The Dr. Fazl Show is now available to view at home on Roku devices and YouTube. Catch up on your favorite episodes right on your phone, available on YouTube and the BioFamily Clinic app. The Dr. Fossil Show is available in many doctor offices across Yuma, Arizona. Pick up your free copy of Health Tips magazine, available throughout Yuma, Arizona or read our digital version at healthtipsmagazine.com. What are the symptoms? You know, the symptoms of kidney is, uh, depends on the kind of problem they have. For example, if you have a stone in the kidney, uh, you will have a pain in the, in the back or wherever the stone is stuck in the ureter. Uh, if you have infection, you will have pain 
as well as fever. If you have a low kidney function, you know, generally at early stage, you will not have any symptoms. So that's why it's important to get, this, you know, your when you have your blood drawn or tested, ask your primary care provider, uh, what is your kidney function is, because uh, if it is uh, early, uh, intervention is required that is better than waiting until you have a, a progression of disease and then we are talking about kidney transplant or dialysis. So that all can be prevented by keeping eye on your blood test and looking, making sure your kidneys are, are, are where they're supposed to be. And if they're not, then the primary care can either have your, you know, if they know how to manage it, they can manage the kidney function themselves or at least have you uh, been uh, have you uh, seen by a kidney specialist. So um, you can also check your kidney function. There's a blood test known as serum creatinine. Creatinine normal is like one just for simplification process. And there's a formula which is available on our website or you can also do Google search it, uh, yumakidney.com. Yumakidney.com you can see under, uh, uh, you know, in, in the link below. Um, if you go on that website, uh, you can punch in your, uh, uh, we call it GFR calculator. You can punch in your um, age, uh, your uh, ra your age and um, uh, your gender and creatinine. And the higher the creatinine, the lower the kidney function is. So it will give your uh, your kidney function and GFR. So normal kidney function, we for assumption, we for simplification, we will say it is 100 percent. So then whatever the number is, then you can have. Uh, classification or of uh, your kidney uh, problems. There are five stages of kidney disease. Stage one is normal, since stage five somebody needs dialysis. So if you are at, uh, you know, between uh, above 60% you're in stage uh, uh, two, above 90% stage one, uh, between 60 and 30% stage three, I mean, and uh, 30 and 15% stage four, less than 15% is stage five. And stage five is when you need dialysis. So. Obviously, if you're in stage three, two, you know, that's where you need to start intervention to, pre to prevent. There's a lot of kidney conditions which can cause kidney disease like inflammation, medication side effects. So you must be, uh, uh, this must be looked into early enough. Uh, however, unfortunately, if you end up in progress progressive kidney disease and you see your provider in the late stage, you know, then, you know, transplant is an option. Um, uh, the kidney transplant can be done early once your kidney function is 20% or below, you qualify for kidney transplant if you're medically stable or clear from other medical issues, you know, which is a long discussion, but you know, you can talk to your primary providers about that. And um, you can have a kidney from a diseased person or from a, a living donor, um, depending on the situation you have. Um, the other thing is, um, um, in the state of Arizona, the waiting time for kidney transplants is, is almost around two years. So uh, once you are on the list of kidney transplant or you start dialysis or hemodialysis or peritoneal dialysis, there, could, there are two kinds of dialysis, hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis. So if you um, are on one of those dialysis, the clock starts, you know. So even though the application get filled out later, uh, it's still too. Approximately in Arizona, the time is around two years. So these states have different waiting time. So fortunately, Arizona is one of the state you can, where you can get the kidney transplant fastest. So that's a good thing about Arizona, right? Uh, so uh, folks, on that note, I will uh, uh, conclude my discussion for today. So if you have any questions, uh, I will ask. Uh, 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 we have an avatar on our stage today. Let's ask her if you have any questions and then we'll go from there. Thank you for watching Dr. Paul TV show. Question please. What are the common medications that can cause kidney problems? Well, that's a very good question. So, because a lot of uh, uh, patients are not aware that a lot of painkillers, so for example, ibuprofen, motrin, aleve, and naproxen can cause uh, kidney damage. So, if you have kidney problems, uh, maybe you can take Tylenol, but uh, I'll try to avoid those medications. We call them NSAIDs. Uh, generally, it's, uh, if you take a prolonged use, if you have a prolonged use of kidney disease, but they by itself can cause kidney dysfunction. Um, well, it was a very good question. Another question you have? What kind of diet should someone with kidney disease follow? Yeah, so it's, 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 it's designed a case by case basis, but in general, uh, low protein diet, less meat and less beans, for example, that's what we say. 
you know, that should be used and should avoid certain kind of uh, chemicals, for example, iodine, which is injected inside the veins, or arteries actually for the angiograms or for the CAT scans that can also cause uh, destruction to kidney function. So they should avoid, uh, you know, uh, chemicals like that, plus uh, uh, low protein type, you know, like one gram per kilogram per day. So if you're 70 kilogram weight, you should have 70 grams of protein per day. Yes, that's kind of general thumb, rule of thumb. Good question again. I don't know what your name is, but I will call you, for example, um, you're um, obviously um, an avatar, so I will call it um, avatar. How about that? Thank you. Any other question you have, avatar? I do not have any more questions today. Thank you for the information. So folks, I think uh, that was the uh, end of my discussion for today. We will uh, uh, be back, uh, I will be back uh, next month with a uh, more interesting topic for your uh, education. Remember the best thing you can do uh, as a person is to learn a new skill and invest in your health. So learning uh, uh, education about your health is the best single tool you can get. So folks, that's what I'm trying to do here to give you uh, a tool and education about your health so you can invest in your own health. We live once and we have single body. So folks, uh, uh, do take care of your body and your health. And uh, on that note, uh, I was doc uh, you were watching Dr. Fadl TV show. And uh, I will be back next month. Folks, uh, God bless you. God bless America. And have a wonderful rest of the month. Thank you.